everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Happy time of day, wherever it is in the world that you are. I'm really excited for you to be here and to share a little bit of some good information. And I wanted to start this series off with a very simple conversation um, about a, or I suppose it would be more of a complex conversation about a simple topic. What is social media? Or more specifically, what are social media? This, uh, this is an important topic to begin with because anyone who is in business today or getting started with social media for business knows that there's a bit of a stigma around social media. Um, it's almost like, you know, this big scary entity that has its own, its own life, uh, like a living, breathing organism. So I wanted to take some time today to go ahead and break down what social media are, because the first step to understanding this is to understanding what it is. To being good at social media, the first step is to understanding what they are. So let's get started with just some quick definitions. What is social? So when you're being social, you are having a conversation. You're chatting with people. You know, you take a walk in the park. You go to an ice cream social. It is just talking, communicating, uh, being sociable. Think about all of those things and what that means to you. Is that how you're interacting on your Facebook page? So to get a little bit more in depth with that, um, we will in a minute, but first, but next let's look at media. So media is the plural for medium, as in a platform. Um, so hence it's what are social media as opposed to what is social media technically because there are multiple types of social media. So a medium is just a platform. So at that very root definition, as we break it down, social media is a platform for us to be social. So by that definition, social media could be a lot of different things. It could even be a neighborhood park, and that's the platform where everybody gets together and socializes. However, I think the key distinction here as to why social media is, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, these, these sites that we have online, why they're more distinctly known as social media sites, is because that is their root purpose. Their root purpose for the platform is for people to come together and be social. Whereas a website could be more of a communication process with several people or a, uh, well, it's more of a, <laughs> a consuming of information. You go there to read something. And the radio is more of a listening platform. Um, a book club could be considered a social medium. However, it tends to be around some specific topic. Whereas something like Facebook, the whole original purpose, the whole standard part of that platform is to have a medium for people to be social and to have conversations to connect about all sorts of things. So that is just a really good reminder of what social media is. Just like many topics as we're getting to learn them, many things that we don't quite understand, it can be very easy to look at it as just sort of some big crazy pie in the sky thing. Um, for example, one analogy might be baking. This is, you know, of course pancake, we have to use some, <laughs> some analogies for food, but this is something that was really relevant in my life as well. I come from a family of people who are incredible bakers and make some really, really amazing desserts that just look beautiful. And I could cook enough food to get along. It tasted really good, but didn't always look the best. Um, we've all been there, I'm sure. <laughs> and I always thought, wow, this is amazing. How do these people make this food from scratch? You know, those beautiful bunt cakes, those really fantastic, wonderful things that just look so amazing. And it just feels like, oh, that's just, you know, that's just something that bakers do. That's something that people do. That's not something that I can do. Um, but what really started to challenge this belief was I was working at a 
shop um, at Walmart actually as the in the bakery department and I had the opportunity to learn how to make all of those cakes those really fancy ones that look all nice that they have in the books and out that you can get for events and birthdays and you kind of think like it almost looks like it's made from a machine well it's not uh, they give you the book and they give you a template you learn how to use the tools and we just make it step by step so with that experience and challenging my belief system a little bit about this being some big complex thing to bake a fancy dessert, I realized that any kind of baking could be that way. If you have a recipe book and you start reading about it, it's really as simple as just following the instructions and putting it all together. And after a few years of doing that, a lot of it just becomes really intuitive and you understand it on a much more basic level. And so that is what this conversation about social media is reflecting. It really can be a lot simpler than we think. It doesn't need to be this big intimidating thing that you know some people get, but I don't get because X, Y, Z. Um, I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard the age one a lot. A lot of people think that it is oh, I'm, I'm too old to understand this stuff, which isn't true. Some of the best people I know at social media are, um, well, my 89-year-old grandmother is amazing at Facebook. Uh, we'll, we'll start there. <laughs> um, and I know 18-year-olds who don't know any social media at all. So it really has nothing to do with that. Um, it just comes down to experience. It's just learning how to do something like everything else. Even walking, you had to learn how to do it at some point in time. So none of this information should be new to you. This all should feel really obvious, really intuitive, really gut feeling. You may have zoned out a little bit now already, and that's okay. That just illustrates my point a little bit more. This really is something quite simple that we can understand. And gaining that understanding will help us break it down into much simpler chunks and that's the first step to getting good at it i mean think about the first time you baked a cake you know <laughs> if you didn't know what the flour was or you didn't know how to use a mixing bowl it would seem really really intimidating but once you've used a mixing bowl five times or you know use a frying pan ten times no problem you know how it works so looking more specifically at various social media platforms we can start with facebook because Facebook is a big one, and it's a very large one that most people use. So Facebook is several different pieces. I like to break Facebook down into three different parts to explain the three different uses of the platform. The first is that everybody who is on the platform has a personal profile. We all have a Facebook personal profile. It's your name. It's your picture, it's the information about you, and um, uh, and Facebook, oh, and it has all of your information. When you communicate with people, it's your picture and your name that's communicating with people. When you're having a conversation with somebody, it's you that's being represented in that conversation as an individual. The second piece of Facebook that's always important to talk about is the pages. So we have these business pages. Now a business page typically has a logo or a product, maybe somebody who's a service provider within the business as the profile photo and then the name that represents it. So when the business page is posting content or commenting or sharing information, it's represented as an image of the business as well as the name of the business. So that is the difference between personal profiles and business pages. Now the third part of Facebook is groups. So uh, for example, our group here, Marketing for Makers on Facebook is just a group of personal profiles of people who are together to learn something. They have a conversation. So where that's different is, you know, on a personal profile, or on a business page, you're posting information on the timeline. And so it's creating a timeline of posts. And someone might be able to write on your wall, 
but basically you've just went gone through and posted you know for your personal profile you've posted updates or shared memories uh, shared photos of what you did this weekend on a business page hopefully it's a lot of helpful content tent providing value going live or um, every now and again throwing in a little bit about what you sell and why it's going to help somebody but the nice thing about groups is that it's a conversation anybody can post anybody can share content anybody can get in there and share information so let's tell it like a story so you have your profile which is jane doe who also runs a page you know jane doe inc <laughs> as a business page and she's a part of a group uh that's you know jane doe's united <laughs> i could see that you know a, a jane doe anonymous club um anywho so Jane Doe is the main person who has her profile and shares information. Uh, she will post about what she did today. Uh, you know, she goes for a jog and breaks a, a new record for how fast she ran a certain amount of distance and will upload that from her Fitbit onto her personal profile and share it so all their friends see it. Um, and she can have a conversation about that. Then she goes onto the business page and posts some helpful content. Uh, about, about a certain topic that can really help her audience. And after that, she goes into the group and talks a little bit uh, about, you know, shares a post about something interesting about that she saw on her run today, and then is able to have a conversation with a few other people on the post. So that is sort of the three breakdowns of what the different uses on Facebook are. And then, of course, the most familiar is the timeline. And this is where you will see all the information that people are posting from their personal profile, that business pages are sharing content, and from groups that you're a part of. This is where that content is all seen on that lovely little timeline that you have as you're scrolling through on your phone or on your desktop. And that is where the algorithm comes into play. Ooh, the algorithm. The, that, uh, that <laughs> almost that buzzword for everyone. How do we make the algorithm work better for us? How will all content be seen by the algorithm? And the way that I like to break that down that really helps explain it is that Facebook is trying to create a scenario, create a situation that's building a timeline of what you want to see of what the users want to see as individual profiles looking at their page, um, looking at their timeline, excuse me. So you have the power to control what you see on your timeline. You can curate your experience, which is really, really cool. So you'll see more of what you like. You'll see more of what you comment on. If there's pages you really, really like, you can go to them and say, Yes, I want to see this first. And then every time you log on to your Facebook page, that's the content you'll see first in your timeline. If you're tired of seeing posts from something specifically, or you don't want to see anything anymore, just quit liking it. Don't comment on it. You can even hide posts from a profile or a page, um, even without the other person knowing. Uh, you know, we all have that friend or family member who posts maybe just a little bit too much. So you can just hide that so you don't have to see all of their posts throughout the day. Although, you know, it's always fun to know when Uncle Bob is eating another hot dog. <laughs> but effectively, it all boils down to that. It's very, very simple, um, but it has grown to a very complex thing with millions and billions of people using a platform. There's no handbook. There's nothing that's been done like this before. And it's always important to remember that it's being run by a bunch of people who are also just kind of figuring it out like we are. Um, it feels a lot less intimidating when you think about it like that, doesn't it? <laughs> so that's a basic breakdown of Facebook. The, and one that I know most about, which is probably obvious, but a quick run through of Instagram, which Instagram is also now owned by Facebook uh, for quite some years now. It's, so it's similar 
in the idea of the algorithms and the dates, or the data. They also have personal pages and business profiles. Well, it's less of a page and a profile. It's effectively very similar other than on a personal Instagram profile, you don't have as many links that you can add. And on a business profile, you can't necessarily use certain hashtags. Um, that kind of goes in and out. Sometimes they're, the hashtags won't work and sometimes they do. But the nice thing about a business profile is that you can, or a business page, is that you can schedule it from Creator Studio right on your laptop, uh, which is, is a time saver, <laughs> something that I use all the time. But Instagram is mostly pictures, it's visuals. So whereas Facebook, we might do a lot of commenting and uh, sharing, writing stories, Instagram is a lot of images. And you can post video, but it's almost separate, separated with the IGTV, uh, which is still kind of growing. So we'll see where that one goes. But Instagram is kind of like when you get together with your family, <laughs> and we've all been guilty of this or with our friends, and we pull out our phones and just, oh, look at these pictures, look at what I did here, you know, sharing your vacation photos during, uh, during Thanksgiving dinner, something like that. Except for just a little bit more frequently and a little bit more of a conversation, you know, here's our photo, here's our photo. Um, so that is a good breakdown of what Instagram is. And of course, one big differentiating factor from Instagram as opposed to Facebook is that Instagram uses a lot of hashtags. And so that provides some service, uh, some additional use of tagging what the topics of the images are about. So if you want to look up hashtag pancakes, for example, you'll probably see a lot of images of pancakes. This can be really useful for searching for information about something that you want to buy or looking for pictures of something that's inspiring to you. Um, so that's kind of a quick and dirty of Instagram. Um, the next big one is Pinterest, which Pinterest is really growing fast. And Pinterest is really more of a search engine than a social media site. Now, a search engine is like Google. You go to it to search for information. However, one unique piece about Pinterest is how you have all those images and all that content that pops up that you can just see and scroll through that's really curated based on what you like. You can choose to follow certain people. You can choose to follow certain boards. You can choose that experience, or you can search for whatever you want, kind of like um, like an interactive Google experience uh, that's a lot more image focused, which is which is kind of cool. I think about you know projects that I used to do back in high school or something, and you need some inspiration, and you can't think like, my goodness, how can I visually represent this word? So you go to Google Images and see, okay, you know, let's Google image this and see what does the color blue bring up most? Or what is the, the feeling of confusion? What does that look like? Um, <laughs> but now you can do that a little bit more with Pinterest and have a lot more different types of content uh, with links. You can look up recipes. You can look up uh, crochet patterns. Uh, I've done that once or twice. But even more in-person based, Pinterest is kind of like a college dorm room, or maybe you had one of these in your house as a kid, but you get this big pegboard, you know, like those cork pegboards uh, that you put colorful thumb pins in, you can put pictures on, and when you get a recipe you like, you can pin it there, and you pin some pictures of you and your friends. Um, when you have inspiring quotes, you pin all those up as well, or uh, have some information uh, about a homework thing that you really liked. You know, you just create this whole pin board of fun activities, cool, inspiring things, um, and share it with people. So when your friends would come over, you could look at that and swap recipes, and they could write down one you had, and you could write down one they had. So basically, that's kind of what Pinterest is, just on a much larger, more shareable level, because we have access to those kinds of tools now in this uh, social media day and age. 
So that's kind of a fun look at what Pinterest is. And then really quickly, Twitter, uh, I heard described once, and this is not my description, and unfortunately it was such a long time ago, I don't remember who it was to give credit to. However, they described Twitter as a cocktail party. Um, you know, the type where you walk into one of those big rooms, you know, like a rubber chicken dinner, <laughs> and before dinner there's a social hour, and you're all walking around, and you'll hear a snippet of conversation over there and a snippet of conversation over there. And you see some people at this table talking about something and you decide to go join that conversation. Um, but then you hear something over here and, you know, you hear a little bit of politics over there, a little bit of something else over here. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of what Twitter is. Um, and it's one of the really unique things about Twitter is their timeline uh, where you see the information. So they also have, you know, the business pages and the personal profiles, but the big difference is there's no algorithm. It's just timing. So whatever was posted most recently is what you see on your timeline when you go through there. So that's what's really, really interesting. Um, and it's more about, you know, volume and good quality content and using timely hashtags because hashtag research is just huge on Twitter. Twitter is where hashtags were invented, for goodness sakes. <laughs> um, to tag themes that you're talking about, give a little organization to that chaos. So then finally, last but not least, um, I like to describe LinkedIn as a chamber of commerce meeting. So you're there in your professional attire, looking nice, you know, you've got your business card with a little bit of information. Perhaps you've bought your resume if you're looking for a new job or some pamphlets to share a little bit about your company and do some networking, you'll have conversations with people. Oh, you went to that college? Yeah, me too. Oh, let's get coffee over it. Um, which is a big digression of all of the people on LinkedIn who send you all these sales pitches. Um, is that just me? I don't know. I probably get five a day. <laughs> um, but you wouldn't act like that in person. So that is a very brief breakdown of what social media are. Those are the big five social media. Then of course we also have YouTube and Vim, uh, Vimeo, TikTok, uh, Twitch. I think Tumblr might even still be around. You know, we had MySpace back in the day. I'd say AOL, those online messenger chats originally, that was a form of social media. But the ones that I went through, those are the big five that we see most frequently now. And they're really important ones to know. So just remember, social media is just a platform. A social media site or a social medium is just that. It's a platform to be social and have a conversation. So hopefully this helped you get a base level understanding of what everything is so it seems a little bit less intimidating. And if you have any questions, of course, please let us know. Thanks so much.